Right before I drive away to forget Why do I give a damn at everything we set up? G'day guys, Chaos Chronicles. All right, we're back with another video. And so today I'm going to answer a question from one of our subscribers. And um, so this is from Sean Power, uh, 8538. And the question is, hey Biff, is sexual assault in prison common or is it more standovers? You've talked about people trying to get one over a newbie. If someone pushes in front of you in line to get lunch, is that considered something to call out and punch on over? Interested to hear your thoughts. Well, that's a good question, so let's get into it. All right, so the the sexual assault part of that question. Um, so, you know, I've, I've answered this in um, other videos before um, and, you know, as much as I, I hate to say this, um, you know, it does happen, but, you know, it's a very, very, very rare occurrence that you hear of anybody getting, um, you know, sexually assaulted like that. I mean, it absolutely does happen. I have heard of it happening in recent years. I know in earlier years, like back in Pentridge days and that, um, you know, it was a pretty common, common occurrence and, um, you know, what, what can I even say about it? It's, it's uh, what I don't understand. This is what I don't understand. So like, and I've been a criminal most of my life and I can't wrap my head around this. So here's these people that, that preach that, you know, they hate rapists and pedophiles and dogs and snitches and this and that, you know, like hardcore criminals they hate all that kind of thing and then and then they go to prison and rape somebody like how does that how is that not in the exact same category as the people that you're protesting against so to speak in the first place like i just i, I can't wrap my head around it i absolutely don't agree with it um and you know like i've also said in other clips before that you know, generally you will find that if somebody has sexually assaulted somebody or if somebody has sour graped somebody, um, you can guarantee you that that person is going to get stomped, like they are going to get taken out. Um, I, I don't know of any crooks that would stand by and and watch and watch that happen, you know. Um and, and yeah, you know, which is crazy. I just can't wrap my head around it. You know, it's not as common practice as what it used to be. And it used to be like dealt out as like a punishment. And that's what I can't wrap my head around. I just can't wrap my head around, you know, these pe people all day, every day preach that, you know, they, they hate snitches, they hate rapists and, and shit like that. And then they go to prison and, and rape somebody. Like how, I just my brain just goes wow like how how is how is this a, you know I, I just can't wrap my head around it and you know um it's the most putrid thing ever you can do for a punishment you know and um like the the absolute 100 million percent truth is that like like let's say for instance if i was just kicking back in my unit one day and and um, little Tommy Smith came up and said to me, that's just a made up name, by the way, said to me, hey, Biff, old mate raped me last night. I can guarantee you right now that I am going to arm up straight away with my biggest, scariest bone crushing shank. And I am going to go and attack that guy like a spider monkey. And you know, I, I really don't know many people that wouldn't act like that. And you know, it, it, people there would be a lot of people that would say that they're going to do something about it but generally when people are like you know sour graping people that they're, they're pretty they're usually somebody that's tough and can handle themselves that's how they're able to do that you know so a lot of people would go yeah i oh know bali you know bali um, and I know there's there's a video on here on um, YouTube. Um, you will see it um, about um, 
the guy in Sydney that um, got done sexually assaulting prisoners and then um, got taken out, like, for good. He got carried out in a body bag for doing that kind of behaviour. Um, I believe his last name was, like, Fernando or something like that. I can't remember, but um, I, I know that he was a bad standover man and, and that's how he used to get his point across was, you know, he would get young, impressionable blokes and he would sour grape the shit out of them. And, um, you know, um, from what I know, like this this happened in New South Wales prisons. I know that this went on um, a lot. And what gets me is, like, how was this How was this guy able to get away with this for so long before people did did something about it? It doesn't matter how scary that person is. You just get one more person or two more people to do it with you, you know, like even a whole crew of you. If somebody is there doing that, excuse me, if somebody is there doing that, then they are like need to be taken out at the soonest possible time, and I just can't wrap my head around how like you know this this guy in particular was able to. Um, I, I, I'm going to find out his name, and I, and I'll let you guys know in the comment section, um, or in the in my description of the video section, um, this guy's name, and you can see. Um, and and was also like it, it was bad, like like going around hurting people, and um, yeah, it's, it seems like this guy got away with it for a very long time before some boys took him out, you know. Um, and so um, the next bit of that question I will answer, which was, you know, if someone pushes in front of you in line, um, you know, is that something to punch on over, or do you just leave it? And like, so if you ask me, he, here's the truth, right? So if somebody pushes in front of you, they're disrespecting you, right? And like this is not outside, this is inside. You've got to understand that, that this is how the mentality of these people and this is how it works. And if you accept disrespect of one person, then you can expect, you know, the onslaught of disrespect to come after that. And um, so, you know... I would definitely say you've got to punch on over it. You've definitely got to stand up to yourself and say, Oi, fuckhead, what are you doing, mate? Don't push in front of me. Um, I'll give you that many left. You'll be begging for a right. Um, you'll be picking up your teeth with broken fingers, something like that, you know. But, um, yeah, you definitely got to act on it because it's disrespecting you in in the sense that they're saying, they're better than you, they're more important than you, and you're nothing because, you know, I've just pushed in front of you and there's nothing you're going to do about it, you know. Well, bullshit, there's nothing I'm going to do about it. If you push in front of me, I don't care who you are. And this is another thing. So, like, this shit does go on and people let other people get away with it because um, they might be someone of stature, right? And so, like, I'm going to say this right here, right now. So we're all just bare bums in the shower. I've said this in other videos. Chopper says it the best is we're just another bare bum in the shower. And what he's saying by that is, you know, you just, we're all the same. You might be a gangster outside, but you're not outside right now with your army and your guns and your money and this and that. You're inside with me and all the other crazy people. And so, you know, people will not act on it and not because that might be someone of stature. And so, like, oh, this is me saying right now that if you're going to prison and you are in prison, if someone disrespects you like that, if you are put yourself in the predicament that you have been in prison, well, then this is how you have to act. So, like, you know, you can't let someone disrespect you. If you let it happen once, it's going to continue to happen for the rest of your sentence. And I can promise you that right now. All the hawks will be sitting off and they will they will watch that, that someone has done that to you. And then they think in their head, oh, yeah, well, he's, he's weak. I'm going to do the same thing. And, um, yeah, so you definitely got to act on it. It is definitely something that you would punch on over. And if you did it, that someone would probably want to punch on with you over, you know. So, um, you know, I can't stress enough that you can't let somebody disrespect you in the slightest. 
Um, if you do, it's going to continue to happen. Um, you know, you might not have to tee off on someone straight away or whatever, but you definitely have to pull them up like you definitely do. And yeah, this is what you, you have to do. And if you don't do this, well, then, you know, people are going to sit off and they're going to see that you're not standing up for yourself. And next thing you know, you're going to have people doing stuff to you that, didn't happen before you let someone push in front of you. And I promise you, that's all it takes. That's all it takes because everyone else that's in that line, they're going to see that you just let old mate push in front of you and you've done nothing about it. Um, so, yeah, um, I know that, that the, the, the question is, you know, is that something what people punch on over? That is 100%. But I'm giving you the advice right now that, you know, if you were to end up in prison that, you know, you, you can't let somebody disrespect you in the slightest because, you know, it might be slightly disrespecting you today, then tomorrow it's going to be just a little bit more disrespect. And then the day after that, and then the day after that, it's just going to snowball. And next thing you know, you've got people taking your shoes off your feet, you know, the clothes off your back and and there's nothing you can do about it because, you know, you didn't stand up for yourself before. You're not going to stand up to yourself when, you know, she comes to the crunch, um, you know, which leaves me to the end of my video. And I'm going to go into it a little bit more on my, um, you know, don't do drugs, jail and crime. It's a shit life because like, you know, it's all good for me to just sit off and say that and say, you know, don't do what I did. And, and, but like, I'm not really explaining why it's a shit life. And, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to do right now. And I'm just gonna, I'm going to use some examples why it's a shit life. So, you know, for all of you younger crooks out there, that are, that are, you know, in that life right now, smack banging it and, and you've got some solid mates and you think it's, you know, you're a tight, you're a tight friendship. You might have all got the same tattoo, you know, you're tight, got your crew tattooed on you, this and that. Well, let me tell you right now that I can promise you if there is a group of 10 of you sitting around in a room right now watching my clip, have a look around. Have a look around at your 10 mates because I can promise you when all 10 of you get pinched on a crime together, that out of them 10 people, you're probably going to get snitched on by five of them people, right? So out of your out of your 10 mates, I can promise you, if you're the solidest mate there in your crew, you don't snitch and this and that, you, you know, you live by the code, I can promise you right now there's only one more mate out of 10 that lives by that code as well and... and you know, doesn't just talk about it because I can promise you, you know, maybe three to five of them mates are going to snitch on you. Um, maybe two to four of them mates are going to try and sleep with your girl when you are locked up. Now, I mean, even when you are in a club or this and that, I can promise you right now that, you know, people talk about brotherhood and this and that. There is no... And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not disrespecting anyone that's in a club right now. So for those club members that are watching, you guys know what I'm saying is true, that the brotherhood of bike clubs, what it used to be, is not there anymore, you know. Yes, there is a brotherhood, and yes, some clubs have got, you know, their crews down packed, but not all of them. And you have to admit that that it is not what it is is it used to be and so which leads me back to my group of 10 friends so you know two to four of them are gonna um try and sleep with your missus up to five of them are gonna snitch you um three of them are gonna are gonna well actually eight of them if that if you are the only one that gets locked up in a crime Eight of them people are going to forget you exist until the day you get out. And then they'll be like, oh, brother, how you going? I love you, bro. Fuck, I've missed you, this and that. Well, if you fucking missed me, this and that, how hard was it to write a letter? And you know what? It's not even that hard to... You can get on and write an email and send an email to a prisoner and they're going to get that email. And you know what? They can email you back. You don't even have to write a letter. Um, I'm, and, and I'm not... Like, it's just, I just need you guys to know 
that this thing that you are holding tight within your heart right now, your crew, and this is to my crews and my my gangsters and my crims that are hard in that life still right now. You guys know I am talking the truth, but the young ones need to know that by the time that you are my age, that 10 friends is going to be down to two friends. And why? Because like I said, you're going to go to prison. Eight of them are going to forget you exist. Um, up to four of them are going to try and sleep with your missus. Um, up to five of them are going to snitch on you in that um, thing to, to get them out off their their own crimes. And and here's another thing. So you might think that you guys have got a crew right now, this and that, and and, and being young. So I'm talking to my teens and my, my young men, you know, that, that haven't done like hard prison time yet. I can promise you guys that when – when the time comes, if you guys are doing, you know, stick-ups and run-throughs and this and that, um, robbing dealers, this and that, I can promise you all that stuff comes to a flying halt real quick when you are captured by the police. Everyone thinks that they're smarter than the police, this and that. Well, I can tell you right now that you are not and, and you might be getting away with what you're doing right now. But let me tell you, these guys have endless amounts of money and endless amounts of technology to catch you out right now. And the easiest way what they catch everyone is on that bad boy right there on their phone is, is, is a smartphone and it is the best invention ever for the police. And, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm just going to cut back to it and say, it, you know, that that's why it is a bullshit life because, you know, by the time you get to my age, you're going to realise that I was hardcore into the crime and thought that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And, you know, I, I let things slide at the start. You know, a mate did this, a mate did that. But by the time you get to my age, being done in by that many mates and and i can tell you the brotherhood and all that like i said in the bike clubs is non-existent the only reason you should be joining a bike club right now is to make money and that that's it you know and that's about all it's good for and once again no disrespect to the brothers that are in there right now because you know i understand that you're doing your thing and and that's cool i respect that but you've got to know that what i'm saying is the truth that you know the brotherhood is not there it's not it's not the early 90s and 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 80s anymore it's 2024 and everybody is out for themselves and that's why i say it is a fake bullshit crappy life and um yeah which leads me to the end of my video there guys don't do drugs jail and crime it is fake and bullshit and um yeah if you're doing crime like i say this as well you know you're only gonna end up in prison or dead you know, and if you don't end up in prison and you're doing crime every day for years and years and years, you must be a snitch because you just can't not get caught. Like, yes, people do it. 100% I know people do it, but the vast majority of us cannot, you know. Um, but, yeah, drugs, jail and crime, what a shit life that is, guys. Go home, kick back with your family. And, like, you know, like I said in my last video, one of my last videos, people ask how I stayed out of trouble for this and that. Go and buy yourself a gaming console. Take your anger out that on that, you know. Live the life that you wanted to live in real life um, in gaming. And I can promise you right now it will keep you out of trouble. It kept me out of trouble. And it's a good therapy for me too. But find something. Find, it, find something that's going to keep you busy. But like... You know, it, it all comes back down to family. That's what it's all about. That's the meaning of life is your family. So, you know, put down the bag, pick up the kids, guys. I've been Chaos Chronicle. Right before I drive away to forget.